welcome back to Balanced Health. For all the moms and dads and grandparents out there, today we're talking about the advancements and issues that surround pediatrics with Dr. Katherine Sunderbrook. I'm so glad you joined us today. This is very, uh, very uh, educational, and I'm learning some stuff. Like I said, I'm rusty. I, I raised my kids 30 years ago, you know. But uh, we, you were going to ask her something about. We were talking about the probiotics, mm -hmm. which, you know, my hats off to you because you actually give a, you know, recommend a supplement as you're given the antibiotics. Isn't it great that traditional medicine is coming around finally? It is. And, you know, they come around when they feel that the evidence is clear. Mm -hmm. So for probiotics, the evidence is clear. I mean, for me and my family, it was clear, you know, 10 years ago. But, yeah. you know, doctors have responsibility sure. to, to get this information in the way that they do. Uh, we'll jump over to asthma. Um, you know, on our show, a lot of our viewers are into natural remedies and so on and so forth. And many are very reticent to use things like steroids for uh, episodic uh, asthma uh, situations. And I have found through my own research that these bronchial dilators like albuterol and so on and so forth are very non-invasive and virtually side effect free. And we actually got more control of my daughter's asthma by using that quicker rather than later. And I learned the hard way mm. because I really tried to avoid the drugs and unfortunately we had to learn the hard way a couple times. I'd like you to just talk about how what protocol you use in your office for this scenario. Yeah, you're absolutely correct that albuterol is for sudden asthma symptoms is the first line therapy and there's really nothing that is safer or works better mm. um, for a kid who's having trouble breathing, wheezing, coughing, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, the problem with asthma is, again, it's such a spectrum of disease and there are kids who only need albuterol every once in a while for with colds or with exercise um, to keep their cough and wheezing under control. Um, and then there's kids all the way on the other side who need lots of medications on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And what we're finding out now is kids usually do best when there's some combination of the two. So you have like these corticosteroids that are used on dr more like dramatic events. And now the, we see a lot of advertisements for these um, daily type steroids. Uh, I, is it Advair? I'm not sure I'm pronouncing. Mm -hmm. What are the difference in those two steroids? Right, yeah, you're exactly right. There's two types of steroids that we typically use for childhood asthma. Um, the first is the oral steroids, usually comes in a pill or a liquid. Um, and that we really only use if kids are having sudden um, onset of worsening symptoms and only use it for the shortest time period possible, usually around five days mm. um, for what we call a sudden asthma attack or an acute exacerbation. Um, and then there's your inhaled steroids, which some kids need to take on a daily basis um, to sort of keep the inflammation at bay. The nice thing about them is being there inhaled and not taken through the GI system, they act locally and have much less, you know, whole body side effects than something that you would take that gets absorbed through your stomach. Mm. Can we move to a different topic here? I, I want to, one, one, I guess, uh, pet uh, pro project of yours is, is, is it, what is the name of the disease? Celiac? Celiac disease. Celiac yes. disease, which I didn't even know what it was, and probably some of our viewers don't know what it is, but you've, you're seeing an increase in that. Could you talk about what that is? Yeah, what it is is an intestinal sensitivity to a protein found in wheat, barley, and rye called gluten. And gluten is what makes breads and cakes taste so good, nice and spongy and have that nice bread <coughs> texture. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately for some individuals, their body has a reaction to that protein and actually causes their body to attack their own small intestine mm. and cause intestinal damage. And I unfortunately had to become a sudden expert in this when mm. I was diagnosed with this disease at the age of 29. Really? Having had only minimal exposure to it through my mm. you know, medical training before then. So well, what should a parent be looking for? How, how yeah. do you, how does this, is it insidious? Is it very fulminous in its onset? What's, what's it like? What makes it so tricky is it can appear in so many different ways in different individuals. Um, the classic child with celiac disease that we used to see, and if you look it up in a textbook, what you'll see is a child who's very thin, skinny arms and legs, mm. big, full, uh, bloated looking belly mm. with chronic diarrhea. Oh, wow. Unfortunately, that is only a small portion of the people who have celiac disease. And there's um, much higher percentages who can present in any way, chronic abdominal pain, chronic diarrhea, constipation, mm -hmm. um, sk weird skin rashes, which is how I was diagnosed. Wow. Is their growth abnormal, usually? Um, a, a lot of times it is abnormal, um, especially when it affects a young child. Um, but I have had it my whole life, not known it, and you know, managed to do okay. You look pretty darn good. <laughs> yeah, you do. Uh, gluten intolerance, so if you remove gluten, 
Are they okay? Well, that's the other sort of great thing about this disease is that there's no medication needed to treat it. Mm. All you need to do is eliminate gluten from the diet, which, which is not is the easiest, not the easiest thing, thing to do. Well, can I just, it, it, adults can be diagnosed with it as well, they right? certainly can. I have a friend in, in Louisiana who's my age, and just like a year ago, he was diagnosed with that. So he can't eat beignets anymore in New Orleans, but <laughs> but he's been able to control it very well mm -hmm. through diet. Interesting, and I, we'll, we'll talk more about that. But remember to email your health questions to balancehealth at tln.com and go to tln.com and click on Kylea for more information. And coming up on our healthy cooking segment, a recipe that will bring adults and kids of all ages to the kitchen mm -hmm. table. This is my personal favorite. <laughs> and more with Dr. Sundar Brooke and her thoughts on autism. So don't go away.